Tonight on Lost and Found. So I went and ran and switched it over, looking at him. Growing up without his father, Ted was shocked to see him on TV. He got to choose some prizes and he said, I'll take the wetsuits for my son. But a broken promise left him wanting. After that, the years went by and me and my son hard up. He last saw his mother when he was four. The circumstances were pretty unpleasant. Later, an angry phone call left him bitter. And I threw the telephone number away. Now, a health scare has pushed him to find her. Just over a year ago, I had a heart attack and almost died. And a broken family. A girl wants her dad. My mother has always told me that my father never wanted a relationship with me. and I guess he just didn't really care. Life can be quite complicated. <laughs> what did he say? Families that are lost and found. A little bit longer, you know. They're always unpredictable. I was buzzing out far, oh, man. There's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Hi, my name is Ted Grant. I've been looking for my father, Jack Brooking. It's been 28 years since I've seen you. I haven't seen you since I was seven. It's important to me that I find him for myself and for my children and my family. Human nature is interesting. A child's wish for acceptance by a parent never wavers. Ted Grant's a keen surfer, and every chance he gets, he's in the water with his daughter, Savan. The surfing is a link back to his father. As a youngster, Ted was taught to surf by his dad, but that was the last contact they had. Ted's a proud dad. With partner Tanya, they have three children. Nine-year-old Savan, Kira, five, and Levi, two. Ted works in forestry on the East Coast, driving trucks and building logging roads. I fly to Gisborne and then drive 150 kilometers north to remote Tiki Tiki to meet Ted. Ted's mother had a short relationship with a man called Jack Brooking in Wellington in the 1970s. But that relationship ended when his mother moved home to Wairoa, taking Ted with her. But in spite of being 400 kilometres apart, Ted regularly saw his dad in the early years. When was the last time you saw your dad? The last time I've actually been with him was when I was seven. He was gone and all my childhood with my father disappeared. When he was 14, years after his dad's last visit, Ted suddenly saw him on a television game show. I saw him on Wheel of Fortune. My auntie rang me up and told me my father was on TV. So I went and ran and switched it over, looking at him. I was buzzing out, oh, man. Just kept looking at him and then, um, I can remember him saying, because um, he won the round or something, and he got to choose some prizes, and he said, I'll take the wetsuits for my son, who I haven't seen for a very long time. And, yeah, I knew he was talking about me, and I've held on for that for, for ever since he said that. And um, that's the last time that um, I've ever seen him acknowledge me, was that time. And after that, the years went by, and, uh, no contact at all. For almost 30 years, Ted has wondered why Jack Brooking disappeared from his life. I start my search for the long-missing Jack without much success, but when I locate his birth records, I find his full name is Jack Manihira Brooking. Such a distinctive middle name makes my search easier. On the company's office website, I find Jack Manihira Brooking as the director of a business. And then on that business's website, I find a phone number. Good afternoon, Jack. 
afternoon. Oh, hello. Look, my name's um, David Blamus. Are you by chance Jack or Jackson? Jackson. Well, the reason I'm calling is um, someone's looking for you. Oh, is that right? His name's not Ted Grant, is it? Jack, I discover, is curious about his son. Jack lives in Wellington, has an 18-year-old son, a new partner, and runs a gardening and maintenance company. But I ask Jack if he can meet me in Te Aroa, a small town right on the East Cape. It's where Jack was raised and where his Pākehā ancestors landed in New Zealand. Well, there's no doubt who you are. Uh, thank you. <laughs> How are you? Good. Coming to grab a seat. So this is where the Brookings come from, is it? Yes, it is. The first settlers that came in was uh, Julian Arthur Brooking. Yeah. Came across, met our, our um, Māori ancestor who was already here, um, Tapiti Gerard. Yeah. Great spot, isn't it? Were you ever on a TV program, Wheel of Fortune? Yes, I was, yes. <laughs> yeah. He saw you on there when he was a young teenager. That would have been about 18, 19 years ago. He remembers you winning a wetsuit and uh, saying, this is for my son, who I haven't seen for a while. Aha. <sighs> uh -huh. And you never turned up to give him that wetsuit. I didn't actually win the wetsuits. They were prizes that were up for grabs. How did you lose contact with your boy? I saw him when he was born, yeah. and then his mother wanted to bring him up in Worrell. I tried to keep in contact every day. I wrote to him for about probably a full month, but I never got a response at all. And ever since then, I've been in the dark. So I've got no idea where he is. And um, I just thought to myself, well, if I can't find him, if he wants to find me, he'll find me. So would you like to see him? See I'd what he has to I'd say I'd love to, to see my boy. So. This fella, that's your boy. Hi, Jack. I'm Ted. I'm your son. I'm the guy you haven't seen since I was seven years old. If I can reach out and hug you, I would. Hopefully, that day will come. I want you to meet my children. I love you, Dad. He looks like my father. So, that's your boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's a shock to see a fully grown man. That, that is your son. Yeah. You know, that's your, that's your boy. Happy to meet him? Lovely. I'm, I'm wrapped. I'm wrapped. And I can't wait to meet him. The next day, I head from Te Aroa, 20 kilometres south, to Tiki Tiki. It's incredible that Ted should be living so close to his ancestral home without even realising it. But before I tell him the news, I have a few questions for Ted and for his partner, Tanya. You've been looking for your dad for a, a long time now. What have you done to try and find him? I've looked up uh, Ancestry.com, looked up the phone books and stuff, and, and even rung, rung down Wellington about it, about all the... Jack Brookings down there and still haven't been able to get any positive out of it. What would it mean to him to, to find his dad? Really awesome. Yeah, it'd be awesome. If I can find your dad, what would you say to him? Um, well, I'd, I'd probably do what comes natural, but um, I'd definitely give him a hug, definitely talk to him, yeah, get him to write out the missing information in my birth certificate. <laughs> Um, ever since I've been growing up, all the information about him says unknown. I was hoping that if I do get the chance to meet him again, and if he could fill those missing gaps out for me, like his birth date and ethnicity. So you don't know his ethnicity, whether he's Māori, Pākehā or, or what? I'm pretty sure he's Pākehā, but um, yeah, uh, I really don't know. He's not Māori. Well, I've met with your dad. Oh, yeah. I have found forestry worker Ted Grant's dad. They haven't seen each other for almost 30 years. There's another surprise for Ted. I'm pretty sure he's Pākehā, but, um, yeah, uh, I really don't know. He's not Māori. Well, I've met with your dad. Oh, yeah. He's a Māori chap. OK. His roots are in Te Araroa, just up the road there. 
and he's going to come and see you tomorrow. Hard up. Thank you. Jack has asked that the meeting with his son be the next day, because on this rare visit back to the East Coast, he needs to visit his father and tell him that a lost loved one is about to return. For Jack, it's a spiritual moment, a cleansing process. Hey, Dad. Good to be near you again. I've got a special gift for you, Dad. Um, I'm about to meet my oldest boy, Ted. What better way to bring him into the back to the far now than by bringing him to you guys here um, and just showing him where you are and, and what lineage he's from. The next morning, Ted is in Tiara Roa with his daughter, Savan. Yeah, I did a hockey tackle. Did you do any good runs? She has come to support her dad as he meets his dad and her grandfather. When you lost contact with your dad, do you have any idea why that happened? Um, I don't know why. No, I don't know. He says he wrote a letter to you every day after he last saw you. He says he probably wrote about 30 letters. I might have read, got read one to me, but I, I can't remember if that was from him. No, I don't remember them. That dad who wrote you all the letters, he's waiting to meet you. Yep, hard up. So, yeah. We have to walk around, just around there in front of a tree. That guy's your dad. So, good luck. 28 years. Butterflies going on, totally nervous, almost tripping over. And when I saw him, all my memories started coming back. Then I got a hug and held my emotions in. And then we started being natural. And then the butterfly started slowly going away. Can I get enough of this? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite appropriate that we're under this 600 year old Pahutakawa. Um, that's a landmark of Te Araroa. This is the strength of, of our people. This is where the roots are. So where you been all my life? So oh, this is a little one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi. Oh, she's so small. <laughs> no, compared to us. <laughs> Hugging my dad was, was emotional. I felt like it was meant to be natural. That's lovely out there, isn't it? I feel like, yeah, the puzzle's been put together. And, yeah, I got them now. There we go. And we smile. <laughs> Looking at my daughter and her grandfather. Honestly, I didn't think I'd see that. Sweet. What an awesome, awesome sight. For Jack, meeting his son and his son's family has been uplifting. It's a good feeling to, to know that, you know, your son's turned up. Got it, Jack. And you've got some mokos to carry on your lineage. <laughs> Before heading back to Wellington, Jack leaves two special parting gifts. His name on Ted's birth certificate and his heritage. Not having my father's heritage and ethnicity, it's bothered me for a long time. Um, that'll help me a tremendous amount. So this is my grandfather, and this is your great-granddaughter, Savan. And my mate lives down the road, and I was coming past you all the time, and I didn't even know it. This is my papa. This is our papa. our blood, our whanau. 
it's just um, it's a wonderful feeling. I, I couldn't be more wrapped. My little boy's growing up, but he's still my little boy. <laughs> Ted and Jack are now in regular contact. They've had a family holiday together, and Ted's headed to Wellington with Savan to meet his younger brother. All that weight's lifted off my shoulders, and I feel treasured, happy. I feel happy. Hi, my name's Alan Davey. I've been looking for my mum since I was four years old. I've looked down all sorts of avenues and alleyways and come up blank. I'm hoping you can help me. I've simply run out of leads. 50-year-old Alan Davey was born on England's south coast near Brighton and moved to New Zealand more than 20 years ago. It was very different from the UK, but I liked it. Um, I've never been back since. Now a New Zealand citizen, Alan works as a maintenance supervisor. He and his wife Marissa live on a South Auckland lifestyle block, a long way from his South of England childhood. This is a photograph of my father's football team. Alan's parents' marriage ended when he was three. He was placed into the care of relatives, but still saw his parents occasionally. This is my father here, and there's me. I would have been about six. So when was the last time you saw your mother? In 1968, and um, the circumstances were pretty unpleasant. Alan was in a park in Brighton with his father when his dad suddenly spotted his mother with another man. All of a sudden, my father flew across the park and I remember vividly him grabbing the chap, pressing him against an iron lamppost. It was a pretty horrendous sort of a scenario. So then after that? After that, um, I don't remember seeing my mother again. After a few years staying with relatives, Alan returned to his father's care. His mother was not in his life. So for many years, I did shut off feelings for my mother. But later, in his early 20s, Alan's curiosity drove him to find his mother's telephone number and to call her. But it didn't go well. I didn't think her explanation was good enough, and I threw the telephone number away. Alan then moved to New Zealand leaving all thoughts of his mother behind. But then a health scare prompted a change of attitude. Just over a year ago, I had a heart attack and almost died. Uh, we were out at the shops. I collapsed and managed to survive, thanks to my wife. What were you feeling, knowing you might die? Just thinking inside myself, no, not now. Just not now, a little bit longer, you know. How do you think that's affected your life? The latest this and the latest that, most of that really doesn't mean much to me at all anymore. What means far more to me is laughing with my wife or snuggling into bed at night and the things that really matter. Like finding your mother? And finding my mother would be part of that, yes. Alan's father passed away four years ago, giving him even more reason to find his mother. Marissa, Alan's second wife, is right behind him in his quest. He's a very good man. I only wish I'd met him earlier. <laughs> I mean, he's given me so much, and I want what's best for him, and he wants to find his mum, um, whether she's with us or, or passed on or whatever. Yeah. That must have been hard for her, because, I mean, you've got to see both sides of the story, so, yeah. I'd like to find out what sort of person she is because I believe she's probably a good person. I don't know what that's going to bring. Good, bad, who knows? Alan suspects his mother has remarried, so I don't know what last name she'll be using. I start my search using Brenda's maiden name and I trace her through three marriages, arriving at a Brenda Williams. 
then on 192.com, I find she is living in South Wales. But there's no phone number. But there is a way to get a message to her that will attract her attention. A few days later, I have a phone number. Brenda wants to talk. Hello. Oh, hello, is that Brenda? Yes. Oh, Brenda, it's uh, David Lomas here, and I'm ringing from New Zealand. Oh, yes. Well, I hope the flowers I sent to you got to you OK. They were lovely. lovely. I, was, I was so surprised when the man came to the door. Well, what I'm ringing you about is your boy Alan's looking for you. Yeah, yeah. He's done a video message that he'd like me to show to you. Wow. Oh. You and Alan had a, a bit of a falling out? Well, yes. I, I'm a bit gobsmacked, really, because he did get in touch with me before in the 90s. I wrote and sent photos, and I waited, you know, and was looking at the post box every day, and nothing happened. Well, would you be happy to meet me, and I could show you Alan's message? I'm a bit, you know, on the nervous side this time, if, if, if it's real. I'm heading to the UK. My journey is taking me to Plenetli, just west of Cardiff, on the south coast of Wales. It's where Brenda now lives. Plenetli is now a steel town, but it's mostly famous for its rugby and its beer. I'm curious to meet this woman who I've tracked through multiple marriages and name changes. Are you by chance Brenda? English-born Alan Davy hasn't seen his mother since he was four. I've just found her in Wales. Are you by chance Brenda? Yes. Hello, I'm David. How did you? Nice, nice to meet you. you. Grab this table. I've just been reserving it for us. Right. Ooh. Oh, I'm nervous. So you're nervous? I'm very nervous, yeah. but excited as well. That's good? Yes. The story with you and Alan is a bit complicated. What happened? Well, he spent most of his life with his father, because his father was better at looking after kids than me. I just couldn't cope. Alan recalls a pretty horrific end to your marriage. Um, no, we were still friends. We have spoken on the phone, his father and I. Well, the last thing Alan remembers of you is uh, your ex-husband beating up the man you were going out with. No, I don't know anything of that, no. That fight, or the fight he recalls, is the reason he's got some resentment towards you. No, no, there's never, ever, ever been any fight whatsoever. Not on my part. For more than 20 years, Alan says he, he never heard from you. Did you ever think about him? When he was about six, I used to go to Worthing, where he lived with his father, and um, I'd take him out for the day, usually on a Sunday right. or a Saturday sometimes. In the end, it did just tail off. Do you got any idea what he still looks like? No idea at all. When was the last time you actually saw him? When he was six. When he was six. Oh, thank so, you. Well, if you push that button there, you'll see your boy. Hi, oh. Mum. Oh, hello. Hello. I hope you can accept me into your heart again after all these years. Oh. I'd love to have you as part of my life. I hope we can rebuild bridges. Oh, we can. And we can. hopefully build a, a future together again after all this time. We can. I'd love to know more about you. Oh, what I'm horrible. What happened in the past. <laughs> so many questions oh. and so little time. I, I love you. Oh. Whatever. So that's your boy? Yeah. Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> I can't believe that little tiny boy is a man. 
So you'd be happy yeah. for us to bring him here? Yeah. To Flanetli so you can meet him? Brenda, who's 70, is a former factory worker and now lives alone in a council flat. She moved to Wales after marrying her last husband. He passed away five years ago. Knowing she will soon meet her son again after 46 years has brought up mixed feelings. I used to cry in bed most nights. And I thought he didn't want to see me anymore. I resigned myself that I would never see him. Alan has been patiently waiting for news back in South Auckland. He doesn't know I've found his mum or that I've been to Wales. When you called her all those years ago, you were quite abrupt, almost rude to her. Well, I wasn't rude, but I was a bit of, I was a bit of young man. Because I didn't know the full circumstances. I still don't know the full circumstances, but I'm sure they're probably not as black and white as I originally thought. Well, I've been to a place called Flanefli in Wales. In Wales? And I met a woman there called Brenda. And I told her you were looking for her. And you found her? You have, haven't you? And she was very surprised. Although, I can understand from the telephone conversation I had with her all those years ago. She was surprised and very happy. Crossed her, thank you. Really? In Wales? I've been looking in Sussex. Would you be happy to go to Wales to meet your mum? Jesus. I'll go to Wales. Thank you so much. For Alan Davy, this is the first time he's been back to the UK since leaving for New Zealand in 1992. Having now heard both sides of the story about the last time they saw each other, I'm keen to find out how clear Alan's memory of that event actually is. It's like a photograph in my mind. I remember being at the park with my father. Well, your mother has no memory of that at all. Fifty-year-old Alan Davy thought his mother would be somewhere on England's south coast. But I've found her in Wales. 70-year-old Brenda and her son have differing views on what happened when they last saw each other 46 years ago. It's like a photograph in my mind. I remember being at the park with my father. Well, your mother has no memory of that at all. There's two tides to every story, I suppose. Do you remember her coming and taking you out when you were about six, maybe seven years old? I have no memory of that. It may well have happened, but I have no memory of that. So how's it been for the last few weeks? Oh, horrendous. For Brenda, the long wait has been agonising. For although she's had multiple marriages, Ellen is her only child. I can't sleep. I'm very excited, but I'm also very apprehensive. But on the other hand, I can't wait to see Ellen. Well, I've been back to New Zealand and I've told him that we'd found you. Yeah. And he was just so blown away. Oh. Well, the good news is he's um, here in Flanefli now. Yeah. And I'll go and get him in a few minutes. He'll just have to wait over here and I'll be back. I could I'll... come with you if you like. <laughs> no, no, you have to wait. Hmm. Where is he? He's here somewhere, isn't he? Get on with it, eh? All right, well, <laughs> I'll go and get him. Yeah, don't okay. be long. <laughs> well, your mum is just waiting round the corner here for you. I'm going to leave you here. Good Thanks, luck. David.
That's my boy. Hello. Hello. Oh, I don't need this ticket. What's the thing you could? It's a long time. It's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> You're taller than me. Yeah. Oh. You still look the same. Do I? <laughs> that hug just felt right. Real. <laughs> it was lovely, the hug. I had the hug of my life from my baby. And I thrilled to bits. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about what happened? It's about now. Um, it was smashing. They've got decades of catching up to do, but first, Brenda's got a little bone to pick with me. It was a long time, and I told you to be quick. <laughs> but you, you was ages. Uh, yeah. The next day, and everyone's in good spirits. Brenda wants to introduce her son to her friends and to her boyfriend. Look who you look. Who happens to be called Alan. Hi, Mum. Hiya, babe. You know what I've been thinking about all night? What's that? I didn't give you a kiss before I got oh, out of the car. Oh, well, you'd better do it now. <laughs> He's my boy. He's the best, isn't he? He's got to be. Get yeah. on the chair. All right. We talked about our differences of what we believe to be the truth, but it's all ended up as insignificant. I looked at the clock nearly every hour last night. Brenda's already making plans to visit Alan and Marissa in New Zealand. I'm going to save my pennies. <laughs> if I have to walk there, I'll go. I'll go around the street collecting, perhaps. <laughs> I might. I got the cheek. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Ann, and I've been looking for my father. I've always been raised in a Pākehā world, so I'd like to know a bit about where I come from and who I am. I'd really like to meet the dad I have never met. Nursing student Mary Ann Thomas lives in Auckland with her partner, Adam McCool. 19 year old Mary Ann has not seen her father, Michael Ryko, who her mother Pauline had a brief affair with 20 years ago since she was three. She knows little about her dad or her family history. It's left her confused. I've had people ask me if I've been adopted because, I mean, like, my mum's white and I'm obviously brown. And, I mean, I don't know anything about where I come from. I don't know like, my heritage. I feel like I'm just a Pākehā with brown skin. Mary Ann has just one photo of her father taken on her third birthday. At that time, Michael had visiting rights, but afterwards he disappeared from Mary Ann's life, apparently after Pauline blocked his visits for reasons Mary Ann never knew. My mother has always told me as well that my father never wanted a relationship with me and that I guess he just didn't really care. So a man who didn't care about you, but you want to find him, is that right? It was just so hard seeing, like, other children with their, like, relationships with their fathers and knowing that I never had that. The breakup between Mary Ann's parents was messy, and though her mum understands Mary Ann's wish to find her dad, she does not want to discuss the matter or assist. It's left Mary Ann with some burning questions for her dad. I just want to ask him, like, why he left. It's kind of like why he hasn't been there for the majority of my life.
I can find no trace of Michael Riker, but on his birth certificate, I find his mother's maiden name is unusual. On Tiranet, I find she owns properties under that name, Nolene Tejao. And at the same address in the White Pages, I find her under her married name, MacDonald. Oh, hello, is that Nolene? Yes. Uh, hi, Nolene. My name is David Lomas, and I'm just trying to track down your son, Michael, because his daughter, your granddaughter, Mary Ann, is looking for him, but I can't track down a phone number for Michael. Michael? Uh, well, I will have to get in touch with him. What do you think would be best, uh, you talking to him about it or me giving him a ring? I will approach Michael, because sometimes Michael is can be quite complicated. Three days later, I get a call from Nolene. She's going to try to bring Michael to meet me, so I'm hoping he'll turn up. Auckland student Mary Ann Thomas is searching for her birth father, Michael Riker. While I couldn't find him, I did find his mother and I'm waiting to meet her, and hopefully him. You must be Nolene and Michael. Hello, I'm David. Hello, David. Hiya. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come and grab a seat over here, and um, we'll have a chat. Michael, your daughter, Mary Ann's looking for you. How does that feel? Uh, surprise. Yeah. yeah. Um, out of the ordinary kind of thing. Yeah. How did it end up that you two got separated? Oh, we just didn't get on. It was sad to leave. And how has it been for you? Do you wonder what happened to your little girl? Not one day goes by without me thinking of her. It has been rough. Been rough for him. He's been sad and depressed. And, um, but I try to say to him, no, you get on with it. She'll come to you when she's ready. Do you remember what she looks like? Yes, yes. Yeah, I only got one photo. You've still got it? Yes. I've got one on my phone. Kept it all these years. Can I just have a, have a look at it? Oh, yeah, that's Marianne when she's young. Yeah. Do you look at it often? I look at it. On a birthday. Yeah, those days are quite sad. Well, would you like to see what that little girl has become? Yes. Mm. Yes. I'd yeah, love to. Tap that button there, it'll be your girl talking to you. Hi, I'm Mary Ann, and you must be my father. I have been looking for you for a few years now, but throughout my life I've wondered where you are, what you've been doing, and if you have thought about me as well. I have been raised in a Pākehā world, so I'd like to know a bit about where I've come from and who I am, and also develop a relationship with you if you would let me. So if you can please agree to meet me, I would really, really enjoy that. I'd love to, man. I'd love to. I just want to give her a big hug. I love to. And Nolene? No? Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. It's a long time coming. Nolene tells me that Mary Ann not only has Maori blood, but also Chinese. Nolene's Chinese father arrived in New Zealand in the late 1940s to work as an electrical engineer. Mary Ann is on her way to meet with me. She has no idea her life is about to change. And when was the last time you actually saw your dad? Um, I saw him on my third birthday party. Yeah. He was only there for a few hours, I think, but the only memory I actually have is through a photo. And do you know what he looks like? He's a very dark man, quite short, probably around 
five foot three. It's just of Maori descent, really. That's all. Well, I caught up with a very short man, I suppose, the other day. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> really? <laughs> what did he say? He's always had a photo of you in his cell phone. Does he want to meet me? He's dying to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Two days later, daughter and father are about to meet. For Michael, particularly, the wait has been hard. I'm here to try and be a, a better dad for her. I've got butterflies in the old tummy, um, nervous as, speeches. When you meet your dad, what are you going to say to him? I honestly don't know. I don't know. Well. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. <laughs> you look over your left shoulder and see down the end, end of the wharf there, there's a <laughs> chap standing there. <gasps> Go down and say hello to him. Mum kind of isolated me from the rest of the family as well, from she her did. side. I know, I know. With the finding of her father, Marianne hopes that she will have closer family ties. Uh, this is my partner, Adam. Good Adam. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. too. You looking after my girl? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Last piece in the family to close that gap. The gap was open at the time when she, she wasn't there, but now it's closed. And yeah, you can all be once be a big family now. I mean, he hasn't been there for 19 years, but I mean, there's still two sides to every story, and within that, I hope I find the truth. Marianne has since met her grandmother, also her father's sister and a nephew. Marianne's been calling and texting her dad, and is gradually working out what place he has in her life. Next week on Lost and Found. Family is just everything in my life. The family hasn't always come easily. I want my son back, simple as that. I've always imagined meeting my dad. What lengths will they go to find him? Guess we could use all the help we can get. Yeah, I guess so. And were they looking in the right place?